Are you new to Python with some basic skills and would like to level up? Then this is the video for you. We are going to be learning basic scripting skills such as if statements, while loops, working with the terminal, even creating a computer opponent because we are going to be creating rock, paper, scissors in Python. Stick around to the end of the video if you would like to learn more about how we took the question and turned it into code. Valuable information there. But for now, let's get into some code. So let's start coding. The first thing we're going to want to know is what has the player selected? So we can do this by using Python's input function to prompt the user to pick a weapon. And we can say R or rock. P or paper, S or scissors. And just put a space in there and a space in there as well to pick a weapon. Now, what we should do is store the result of this to player weapon. So we can print this out to the terminal to see if we are correct. Now, let's run this. Pick a weapon. Fantastic. If we select R as our weapon, we have R, that's fantastic. So now we know that we have the player's choice. What about the computer? So let's start by declaring a variable for computer weapon. And instead of using input, we can use a list to show the choices of rock, paper, and scissors. This is a list in Python. In this case, we have three values inside it. It's just a way of storing data. And we have rock, paper, and scissors. But the computer needs to have a random choice. And we can do this by importing random, then saying random dot choice, and opening and closing brackets. And let's print this out. So we can print out computer choice, and we can add the computer variable here. So this will print out the weapon for the computer. We can pick rock and the computer selects S for scissors. So that's fantastic. So now we have both the player and the computer choices. So we need to determine if there's a winner or if it's a tie. Now let's code the tie scenario first. Very simple. We just have to use a if statement and say if player weapon is equal to computer weapon, then print it is a tie. Fantastic. So now we know that it's going to be a random choice. It's going to be a little bit difficult to test. So what we can do is duplicate this, comment out that line so we can keep it for later, and force the computer to pick R. And if we run it again, we will pick R, so will the computer, and it'll be a tie. That's good. So now we have the tie scenario. Okay, so let's do the winning conditions. How do we know who won? So let's start by saying if player weapon is equal to rock and computer weapon is equal to scissors, then of course the player is going to win in the scenario. So we can say print and you win. But if that is not the case, we can do else print computer win. And to make it a little bit more clearer, we can say uh, print computer has selected. And we can do what we did before by appending computer weapon. OK, so now let's run the code and see what happens. So let's select R. You win. Cool. So the computer would have picked scissors. And if we run it again, hit R and enter, so the computer selected P. So, uh, you know, paper beats rock, so computer wins. But this is not all the scenarios, of course. So let's add some more scenarios. And how can we do that? We can say if player weapon equals R and computer weapon equals S, or player weapon equal equal to paper and computer weapon equal to rock. So in this case, we'll win again. Now, Instead of writing the next scenario and going off screen, we can do enter over here. Notice it's added a backslash for us. This means we can keep adding more scenarios here. We can add another one with another backslash. And we can type or player weapon 
equal equal to scissors and computer weapon equal equal to paper right so those are even more scenarios now and that should be everything let's right click and run to see if we broke anything pick a weapon rock we win fantastic okay, let's pick scissors this time computer selected our computer wins so we don't have to go through all the scenarios now but it looks like it seems to be doing its job so great so let's add some extra functionality to this we would maybe want to play again and right now we can't do that uh if we hit run we'd have to rerun the script manually but let's see if we can do this a little bit better we can do this by adding a while loop and we can say while true keep doing all of this but let's change this pick a weapon r for rock p for paper s for scissors and we can add end to end game so if we rerun this pick a weapon r for rock p for paper s for scissors end to end game so if we type end now nothing will happen it'll still pretend to run the game so what we need to do is check to see if the player weapon is equal to end, we can then break the loop. So anything in orange here, you can see are key words in Python. In this case, we're just going to break. So let's rerun and let's hit R. So computer selected P, computer wins. And you can see again, it's prompting us to play again. And we can do R this time again. You win, great, P, you win. Now I'm tired of playing the game, I just want to end it. If I hit end, it ends. So you can see process finished. That's very, very simple. We just have to add a while loop to make sure this code keeps running. But to stop it from running, we can type in end and it'll end it. So that's very good. So now let's take this further by adding functions to our code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do something that's best practice in Python and say if name equal equal to main. And then we're going to run whatever functions we want to run. You can see a play button is here. The file I'm using is called main. So I suggest you do the same main.py and this will work for you. So we're going to say play. Now play is a name of a function. And let's write that function. We can do this by saying def, so define play. And what is going to be inside play? Well, we know we're going to have to keep everything, of course. And we can paste it here. The notes, tabs, or spaces. Very important in Python. Everything needs to be tabbed in because if it's not, it won't work as expected. Now we know that play is going to run all the time. Fantastic. This, I think, needs to be pushed back. You can see we have the play button again. Let's run this. Great. It, does our game work as expected? It looks like it does. Can we end it? Fantastic. Now we can also put all of this into a function. So let's take it out and we can say def determine winner and notice we have a lot of underlying red happening the reason for this is because we need to have the parameters defined here for player weapon computer weapon and now that goes away so we can then do yeah determine winner and we can give it player weapon, computer weapon. And now code looks slightly better. And I'm not sure. Okay, so it's complaining because it needs that extra space. Cool. And the same up here. So lastly, we just need to do one more thing. And that's to make sure that our tie scenario works. We can do return over here. Return is another keyword in Python. And what it does is that it will break execution of the code. And it will go back to here. So let's see this in action. It'll be if player weapon equals computer weapon, it'll read this, then do this, and it will not execute that. It'll just go back to the top here, which effectively ends the game. 
So let's test. Run. And we go R for rock. It's a tie. And as you can see straight away, it's not outputting any of these scenarios. That's fantastic. So we actually managed to prove the tie straight away. Then rock again. And computer selected P. So computer wins because paper beats rock. And we'll try one more time with rock. Computer selected P, computer wins. So that's it. It's a very simple demonstration of how you can write rock, paper, scissors in Python. I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more, stick around to learn how we would approach this from a question and then break it down into code. Let's take a look at the question. The question is something you might see in an exam paper or even something you might see in a ticket in a professional environment that you would have to work on. Let's read. Using Python, write a script which allows a human to play a game of rock, paper, scissors with a computer unlimited times. We want the player to be able to play again without manually having to restart the game and to stop the game so he or she can continue with her work. Now it's a bit of a mouthful, but let's take a look and break it down. The first thing we can take a look at is what, it, what exactly is this question asking us to do? If we read, it says using Python, write a script which allows a human to play a game of rock, paper, scissors. That's the first thing we want to do. Create a game of well, create rock, paper, scissors using Python. So we know that's our first requirement. We have to create this game, rock, paper, scissors with Python. Okay, so let's take a look. Pape, so we have to play a game of rock, paper, scissors with a computer unlimited times. Okay, so that means the maybe should have some sort of functionality to keep playing the game over and over again. That would make sense for unlimited times because once they play it once they'll have to play it again so maybe it'll be maybe we might need a play again functionality so we want the player to be able to play again without manually having to restart the game okay so yeah play again functionality seems to fit well because if they can play again over and over that satisfies the unlimited times but they also want that functionality to be able to be automatic and not something the user would have to keep having to press, I guess. So play again functionality automatic. Okay. Next is we want to play it, play again man without manually restarting the game and to stop the game so he or she can continue her work. So stop the game. So create rock, paper, scissors using Python, play again functionality and stop. So those are the three separate things that we think we need to work on on this ticket. Not only do we need to know the normal rules for rock, paper, and scissors, which is pretty simple, uh, we need to implement some sort of play again functionality and set up some sort of stop functionality. Functionality. So when you look at these questions, you can break it down from all these words just into three simple points. Create the game, play again, and and stop. So when you approach questions in your exam papers, or even when you're looking at your tickets, read through it, try to understand what exactly is this question asking me, and how can I break it down into smaller bits and actual bits that I would have to work on. This comes with experience. So don't uh, get really worried if you can't do it straight away. But with practice with uh, you know, doing it over and over again, it will get better.